what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. This is gonna be cool. Uh, I do comparison videos from time to time where I like to look at a high MAR player than a low MAR player, and I thought this is a good day to do that. We're gonna be doing it with Puck here today. We're gonna watch from the 10 minute mark to the 20 minute mark of a high MMR Puck and then of a low MMR Puck, a rank 300 Puck and then a Guardian Puck. And we're gonna compare the differences. And the reason why this is fantastic is I found a Guardian replay where this Puck had like, it was like 50 to 60 CS a minute 10, very respectable. And on top of that, he was like 3-0, and and yet he managed to make the game look impossible. <laughs> Not really, but he made it much harder than it had to be. And so I wanna show you guys the very clear differences so you can improve your gameplay and let's get into it. But before we do, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really does, you know, mean a lot as we put a lot of effort into these videos every single day. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players, creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. All right, so we're starting it off with the rank 300 puck. Let's talk about a couple of things before we get into the game though, okay? Because you have to understand that like, just because this guy's rank 300 doesn't mean he's gonna play every puck game the same, right? You know, you guys should assume that. So what's a couple things to note about this game? Number one, his lane went, okay, it was even. Number two, the enemy team has very bad catch for puck. They have a very hard time stunning the puck. What does this mean? It means he can push down the side lanes very aggressively. Okay, so the first thing I really want to put a priority on is pushing the mid wave. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. And you were going to see if you watch high MMR mid laners, this is going to be a very common theme throughout all of their games. And the reason why is if you push out the mid lane, it puts pressure on the map. It shoves the wave into here. And then let's say someone like this Venge responds to it, okay? This Venge is far away from anywhere useful on the map. You know, she could still TP into stuff, and that's why it's probably okay for the Venge to just farm mid anyway. But the main gist is when you push this in, it forces people to respawn in a very defensive portion of the map. And as a result, this is going to open up the map for the Puck later on into the game. Now in this match in particular, I think he made kind of the, the determination that, you know, I have this IO Medusa who are just farming. Yes, I do have a Bane and a DK to set up. He basically puts all of his priority being the dead lane shover this game. And it makes some sense. Basically, none of his other heroes are good at shoving the dead lane, right? DK is okay. He's all right, but it's not great. And so for the majority of the game, you're going to see him shoving out the waves. But the main thing here is that Puck wants to shove waves. Just keep this in the back of your head. Anytime you are a hero that easily can essentially one shot a creep wave, you often should be spending a large time of the game doing that because it puts map pressure and gets you a ton of gold. It also opens up plays on the map, right? Pushing in waves opens up plays. And we're going to see in the Guardian replay, they don't understand that at all. Players don't get that at all. They just run at the enemy and that is low skill. So he shoves in bottom and let's look at the map. Where are their plays? There are no very clear plays. You might be like, oh, he could TP in mid kill Jakiro. Okay, but then he has to commit a TP to mid and, and not shove in like three creep waves. Does that make sense? Like instead of shoving in one, two or three creep waves, he just chills. Now, DK is getting dope. Okay, he TPs in. You guys know I stress this in all of my videos, but please, you have to understand knowing it and then doing what you're seeing here is what, like, it's a huge difference. It is the difference between being good and shit. All right, so now he TPs in and it's gonna be a very clear two-man coil. Beautifully done, right? Nice execution. Gets them Jakiro kill, Lycan runs away. DK stays alive, right? Pretty net positive. And the bottom wave has already been shoved all the way in. And let's look at the puck's net worth. Number one, okay? This is the best way to snowball your pubs on these type of heroes. These heroes that can split the map, especially when the enemy team can't pick you off. After that, he's gonna shove in the mid wave and proceed to go back bottom. As you can see, his team is very comfortable just kind of farming the large, you know, this portion of the map. Uh, they clearly okay are okay with just letting Medusa get farmed, and I would feel the same way. I have this hard carry Medusa. The enemy team doesn't really do anything to Medusa. I mean, like, Tinker is good against Medusa, to be fair, but at least they have the puck 
to hunt the Tinker in these team fights, and that's how this game's gonna play out. So instead, he's gonna shove in the bottom wave, basically as far as he can, goes back to base when he's out of mana. I really like that, right? He uses the silence to go behind the creep wave and orbs back to his base. This is like really good efficiency, right? I love this. Man, this is good stuff, good stuff. And now he goes bots. He had the blink queued up, but instead he goes bots. And this is because he knows his playstyle is gonna revolve around shoving in the dead lane. At least that's how he's determined he wants to play the game. Whether or not it's fully correct, I'm not even gonna get into that, but you can see he's gonna be extremely farmed. And I, I say this over and over again, but this is how you need to play your pubs. You need to make plays that consistently snowball your game. Now, I do want you guys to keep in mind, if you could kill the enemy mid laner five times in a row, you should probably do that. If you can just continuously kill the enemy team over and over and over again, you should probably do that. The problem is people get what I just said. They're like, yeah, I understand, right? I understand if I can kill the enemy team, I should kill the enemy team. That's, that's obvious. The problem is in the execution. <laughs> what I mean by that is then when they get ahead, all they do is fight. You'll see with his bots, which is the best split pushing item in the game, he's going to shove in the bottom lane, gets a dazzle pick off, okay, finds avenge, clears a wave, steals a bounty rune, right? Now he's going to farm a neutral camp, good orb usage to farm multiple camps at the same time, clears another wave, kills a camp, just farming absolutely everything on the bottom side of the map. Completely enabling his DK and his Medusa as well, right? DK and Medusa are going to have a ton of space this game. And you might be thinking to yourself, why? He's not even killing anyone. Well, to be fair, he killed Dazzle. But the point is, look, Lycan has to respond. Venge has to respond. If they don't respond, what happens, guys? This tower is going to die, okay? It's going to die, and they're just going to outfarm them, right? The Puck team is just going to outfarm this team. And if a fight breaks out, let's say the enemy team dives the Dusa or dives the DK, which are very hard heroes to dive, what can Puck do? TP in, because he has bots or he has TP, right? The other times when he didn't have bots, he had TP up. And this next play is maybe my favorite of the entire 10 minute span we're gonna watch. And essentially what we're gonna see here is his Bane is dying. What would most people do here, guys? Right, you see the Bane dying? See this guy dying? Poor bad, right? He's like, please, <laughs> help, <laughs> help me. But there's no one to help him. There's no one to help. Like, you, what are you gonna do, coil the creeps? Like, it's like, there's nothing to do. However, what he can do is what he's been doing, which has completely prevented the Jakiro Dazzle Venge, you know, death ball comp from taking this bottom tier two. Not only taking it, doing any damage to it, it's basically full HP. So they kill this this Bane, right? They kill this Bane, but they can't do anything. All they get is a Bane kill because he understands he needs to avoid the death ball. He has this Medusa on his team, this Io Medusa, who can't team fight a Lycan at all, right? Tell me guys, what, what do they have against Lycan early game? It's Coil, that's basically it, right? That's basically, it. it's a brutal game to fight into this, like, this Jakiro Venge Dazzle Lycan early game. So what do they do? They just don't fight into it. And now he ends up making a bit of a mistake here, but I like the play he makes. Very nice heads up play. The relocate was honestly just kind of late. I think this would have overall worked out if it wasn't such a late relocate. Either way, he sets up for a Tinker kill and continuously forcing the enemy team back onto their side of the map. The enemy team put very little pressure on towers this game with a team comp that naturally has two of the best tower pushers in the game. And I just need you guys to understand how significant that is. With the Medusa and with the DK, he was able to stall the game against the death ball team comp, right? So he, I feel like he really did a good job of understanding his purpose this game and enabling that purpose. All right, and getting into the 20 minute mark, we're gonna see our first major skirmish of the game. They catch the Lycan, Dusa is finally pretty farmed, just off Scotty, level 15 talent online, which is always a big spike for me. It's just such a bit like, the 30 attack speed is so much DPS, man, it feels so freaking good every time. And yeah, good coil onto the Lycan, force him out, he dies, Tinker can't really do anything in this fight, so he gets forced out, they kill off the supports. Oh wait, no, that's not even a support. I'm pretty sure that's a safe laner. <laughs> they kill off the safe laner and they just slowly pick off the enemy team. The enemy team literally has nothing against the Dusa. And this is a perfect fight selection as well. In their jungle, right? In their jungle, fighting into the DK, right? They went on the DK, which is arguably the worst target the enemy team could have. And uh, yeah, it's just such good fight selection from this puck. And you can see why he's a rank 300 player. I even think this is EU, so that's pretty freaking high MMR. That's like 8k. Right, a point, like high AK. But right now, let's get into the Guardian replay. All right, let's get into it. So this is the Guardian 3 puck, some rushing game. What in the world is this? What is this? What is this shit? 
All right, we're gonna be watching a Guardian 3 puck uh, and see what he does. I'm pretty sure this is even a smurf. I don't think it's a high MMR smurf. If it is a smurf, let's say this is like 2k, then this guy's like 3k or 3.5. The point is, it doesn't matter. The point is, you're gonna watch the inconsistency in gameplay. The decisions he makes don't... They're extremely predictable. They're low percentile plays. Like, they're most likely not gonna work a lot of the time based on the circumstances. Let me let you guys see this, okay? Let me let me explain to you what you need to know. Let me show you. Okay, so he's clearing mid. This is pretty good. He clears mid. I think he picks up the ace rune. Okay, probably could have killed the small camp. Like, you see what I mean? Like, all right, doesn't kill the small camp. Sucks. It is what it is. Let's not harp on it. He doesn't have boots, which, you know, not great. He doesn't have two nulls, which I think if you don't go two nulls on puck, it makes the orb not one shot the range creep. Holy shit. Okay, they kill mid, fine. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not... Okay, uses a haste rune, kills mid. Uses the rest of the haste rune to go bottom. I think he kills bottom. Okay, like... Okay, you know, good shit. This is good. Like, I, I... You know, I honestly can't complain that much. This is where the game starts to get sus, okay? This is where it starts to get sus. Number one, he doesn't have boots. Like, I'm not gonna... You know, I, I'm not gonna harp on it too much because I assume most of you guys are buying boots. So, like, I don't really have to explain why it's a problem. Like, get why getting the Witchblade over the boots earlier is not good. Like, you pick up the runes faster in the laning stage, you get to the small camp faster, you can't stack as fast, you get to the bounty rune slower, if you get to the power rune slower. It's just horrible. But the next play he's, he makes are predictable as shit and so unnecessary. He goes bottom here. He's not invis, by the way. This I don't know why he looks invis. They see him. He's walking... Through vision. He's just like, yep, you're under your tier one. There's three heroes, but I'm ahead. I'm just going to make a poop play. I don't have a rune. I, you know, my teammates are not that close, right? These guys aren't that close. This guy is worthless right now. This guy has no ult. It's like, why are we diving? Because you might be like, okay, so what should he do instead? Just shove mid. Just shove mid. Clear this. Clear this. Just shove in the mid lane. On top of that, even this Witch Doctor who is... How is this guy level 8? What the hell? He can just kill the Witch Doctor mid. Now, okay, Void Spirit ends up killing himself. You know, you could be like, Oh, speed, so that was a good play? He got a Void Spirit kill. It's like, I have no idea how Void Spirit managed to die like this. You know? <laughs> but look, he goes bottom again. He goes bottom again. And you guys might be like, I don't do this. Yes, you probably do. And you, this is not Puck specific at all. This has very little to do with Puck. You, why are you- is he bottom? Like, dude, you need to farm! Th these guys know you're here! How in the world do you expect to kill them? And like, somehow they get caught anyway, but look what happens, right? Oh no, he's under a tower! And gets chain stunned by freaking Chad Witch Doctor! <laughs> it's like... Guys, they know you're there! Be more unpredictable. And and by the way, there are times to be predictable in Dota. If he was so far ahead to the point where he could walk just under the tower and wipe them, okay, fine. Right? So, like, to be honest, there's some skill in knowing, like, part of being good at Dota is literally just knowing if, like, the play you're making is going to work or not before you do it. And this guy clearly just doesn't know. So, like, yeah, I mean, like, th there's some... something to th say about that also, oh my god. Like, orbing like this is so sus. It's so sus. You need the damage. Oh my god. Alright. Tell me that kills the Tinker. Alright, alright. Not terrible, not terrible. Hey, here we go! Here we go! Is it gonna work? This looks okay, maybe. Okay, okay. Hey, space created. Space created. But let's look at the alternatives, okay? Because you guys might be like, okay, what should I do instead? Well, hopefully the, the high MMR gameplay kind of gave you an idea of it. It doesn't mean you might be like, oh, but it's mean. He can't push in bottom because it's not like the other game. Yes, then just shove mid. Just shove mid. Guys, look, you see this tower? This is the most important tower in the game. You see all these fights happening bottom? If you ignore this garbage and you shove this in, not only are you going to be more farmed than almost everyone in the game and hit your item timing significantly faster, you are going to take the most important objective in the game. Okay. And by the way, he could just TP bottom if he needs to. He doesn't have one right now, but like, look, you see these plays? Look at Midwave. It's just not even being farmed. I think he TP's back bottom in a second, right? Midwave, just completely unfarmed. Like, you're just never going to see this on a high memory game because this is like, it's like, I don't know. It's like playing basketball and just like, 
never ever taking a three point shot. It's like it just doesn't make any sense with the with how the game is set up right now. I mean, there's better examples than that. Honestly, that was a kind of kind of a garbage example. But the point is, it's like good plays are just not even thought about. And it makes sense because there's more Dota plays than basketball plays, right? When you're playing basketball, I wouldn't say there's like less overall options. There's still a ton of options. But what I mean is like in terms of getting points, right, which will equate to getting CS or getting net worth. There's more potential plays in Dota, so I get why he's not going mid, I get why he's fighting, he feels like he should, he's strong. And in your games as well, you're probably like, speed, but when I'm strong, shouldn't I fight? Because this is clearly this guy's mentality. Yes, you should fight. It's just about where you fight. It's about when you fight. The problem is, his team is farming fine. He has this offlane sniper, which I'm sure when this game ended, he's like, Oh my god, I, we lost because I have an offlane sniper. It's like, maybe you did, right? Maybe you did lose partially because of this sniper, but you also lost because of plays like this. It's like, bro, just shove the wave. Shove the wave, clear the camps. Who is farming more? This tree and Tinker, who are literally holding hands, skipping through the forest. They're just holding hands, having a good time. They should go on a picnic or something. Or the Puck, who's clearing the wave and then forms these two camps and then this camp and then the wave again. Who's farming more? Who's getting more XP? The guy's splitting XP and farming one creep wave? Or the puck farming everything in this area? Obviously, the answer is clear. Okay, so why go for a, a, a 2v1 under a tier 1? Because you don't know any better. And that's fine. I just am trying to teach you. Even here, it's like, look, he casts orb. Would you guys say that you need orb to kill Treant? Yes or no? Probably, right? So, he uses orb to farm, which he should have used like that to hit both camps. He uses orb and silence and then proceeds to go on the tree. It makes no sense. It's just like, kill the closest person. And obviously some mechanical mistakes there. It is what it is. But now he's like 200 HP and can't even shove in the dead lane. Now he hits some neutral camps, kind of shitty neutral camps, but it's fine. It's fine. Like at least he's farming now. And, and, and now the game is weird. Right, like now the game is odd. Okay, it goes for a solo kill. Honestly, I'm I'm kind of cool with that. At least it's a one v one on a hero that's a level below him. You know, like that I can I can get behind. Shoves the mid wave. Okay, cool. Right now he like I think he just runs to top. Honestly, I don't mind this where like he shoves the mid wave and then kind of like hovers to top because it can be a little bit unclear, especially like 16 minutes into the game, what to do, especially when the enemy team is like you know not making any moves. The reality is, it's just like a lot of the time, it's just kind of shove in mid and then be ready to like show up to something. You know what I mean? So the fact that he has no TP right now is so bad because it, you know what I mean? Now, look at this. You see these guys, right guys? You see this? This, even though I don't love TPing the, to the side lanes, makes a lot more sense than what he was doing over here. Imagine this is the fight he takes. Look how far up there they are. And he has a max shrapnel to follow up his coil and a magnetize and a roll. This is a great TP in relation to what he was doing. Does that make sense? So you can farm, 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 watch when the enemy team splits up and overextends. That's how you get the kills. Imagine he was fast and he TPs the bottom. Boom, that is what makes you good at this game, okay? He ends up running top here, he gets a witch doctor kill. Okay, you know, it's cool, it's good, right? It's fine, but like, you know, it, at the same time, he just doesn't clear mid again. It's like both the mid towers just stay up for no good reason. It's like, it's crazy. Literally, dude. He shoves mid and it's like, honestly, at this point, you see where he is in relation to the mid creep wave? At this point, you should just clear mid again. You're not, it, it's too close. Does that make sense? So he should clear it and then make this move. He should clear it and then make the move. It would like the creeps would do another, what? 10th of the tower, which is very significant. Funny enough, at the 18 minute mark, it looks like he kind of gets tilted and finally takes the mid tier one tower, which is like his best play of the game, because now you'll see when you're playing like a mobile hero like Puck in a game where they sort of have a hard time killing you, especially when it's a guardian game and there's like no synergy. Look, he can push up mid and then easily make plays because he's already like far up on the map, right? So now if the if the fight happens here, at least he can get there like quickly because he's already in position, right? So that that's like nice. You know, he's, he's sort of already in the area to take the fights and he's like completely shoving in the wave. This is like quite nice, right? It gets some mid tier 2 pressure. If someone doesn't respond to this, this tower is going to pres get pressured and he's just out farming them. And he can always look to TP into a fight. Like this is another situation where if his team was set up, he could TP in, right? Now they aren't set up. So he farms a small camp, like pretty reasonable. Clears mid wave again. Like 
honestly, I think he kind of realized like, hey, nothing's happening. Like, I can't make any moves. There's some truth to it because he has a Wraith King and a Sniper. And, and people look at games like this and they say, oh my god, if I didn't have a, a Sniper offlane, I could have, you know, I could have kept killing the enemy team. This game could have been over in 18 minutes. And like, even if there is truth to it, it's such a pointless mentality. Why are you looking at what could have happened, you know, like, if you had different heroes? Just look at your own heroes and adapt. And it doesn't mean that Sniper Offlane doesn't do anything. This guy didn't even, I, I, like, like when he TP'd bottom, he was two levels up on the Offlane Tinker, right? He was two levels up on this guy. If you had TP'd, if this guy had TP'd into this and he coils, that Sniper Shrapnel is extremely useful. You know, so it doesn't even matter. And finally, uh, this, uh, this fight was actually a, a good location. The spell casting was like very slow and mediocre, to be honest. Uh, just for some perspective, he should basically lead in with auto attacking this guy. Anytime you have a Witchblade, you want to get it off basically as soon as possible. And then his camera should be here, because what he should do is be moving it up so that he can see where he can silence to orb to hit multiple heroes, right? So hit, silence, orb, up, hit this Tinker, clean up Tinker. Then you don't jaunt to the orb because you wouldn't want to be in the middle, so you just keep playing the outside. Then you like, let's say, coil this Treant or coil this Witch Doctor. Treant's pretty tanky, so like coiling him is kind of kind of trash. So I would hold the coil and then, yeah, this looks like a good coil. So this would be a good time, right? And I, I honestly don't, his coil was kind of slow here. He did it eventually, but nonetheless, I hope you guys learned a ton from that. Honestly, I, I think it really shows how clear of a difference there is between high and low MMR players. And you might be thinking to yourself like, oh, I'm not this puck. Yes, you are. Like, even if you're 2K MMR higher than this guy, like you're more similar to this puck than you are to the 8K player. I, like, I, I know people don't want to hear that, I'm just trying to make you guys better at the game. I want you to have more fun and gain MMR. And you're going to have more fun when you're stomping. <laughs> when you're like, wow, I am good. But all right, nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.